In this video tutorial, we will use the WinForms charting control to create a real-time line chart with several series. Our chart renders the timestamps at the x-axis. Once the x-axis is full, it scrolls the axis visible area so the newly added values could be seen. Note that no data is removed from the chart, the series and the axis just get scrolled. We implement this functionality by custom series. You can easily create any type of series with the MindFusion chart control. You just need to implement an interface. We start by creating a new WinForms project in Visual Studio. We add a new instance of the line chart control through drag and drop. We have the charting controls in the toolbox because we have installed the chart library. You can download it directly from the MindFusion website. Another option is to download and install the WinForms pack, which contains the chart control. Then, we need to add the custom datetime series class, which we will call my datetime series. All series classes need to implement the series interface. In Visual Studio, you can let the members be auto generated. You can learn more about each member of the interface from the online help or the API reference that gets installed with the control. Let's add the private variables that we need in this class. First is the date time value that indicates the start of the time period for this series. Then, there are two lists with values and dates. They are for the Y data and the X data. We have min date and max date, which define the dates that correspond to the start and end of the X axis. The X axis does not calculate data using date time values directly. It uses numbers, and it is the task of the series to convert its date time values at the x axis to the correct numeric values. Then we have two variables that define the start and end of the axis in numbers, not date time values. Those two numbers correspond to the min date and max date variables. We also have a datetime format variable to format the labels, a string for custom formats, and a label kinds variable. The label kinds enumeration defines the possible types of labels that a series can provide. You can see that label kinds lists a lot of options. In our case, we are interested only in x axis labels. We add a constructor to our series. In the constructor, we demand that the user specifies the start date time value of the series and the two date time values that correspond to the beginning and end of the x axis. The next method that we'll add to our series is add value. That's the method that will call on the series instance in order to add a new data value. Every time add value is called, we add the provided value to the values collection of the series and add the current time to the dates collection. The reason behind this is that we build a real time chart and we add values in real time. It is not possible to add data for a future or past moment in time. Note that we convert the date time value to ticks before adding it. The next method that we'll implement is getValue. 
In it, we must return the value at the specified index from the specified dimension. The dimensions are three, for x, y, and z data. If we are asked for x data, we will return the numeric value that corresponds to the date-time value at the specified location in the dates list. We convert all date-time variables to ticks to find the relative position of the requested date-time value. Then we use this ratio to calculate which number is located at this location at the numeric axis. Getting the right value for the y-axis is straightforward. We just return the data at the specified index from the values array. The getLabel method is similar to getValue, with the difference that we will return the label at the requested index rather than the value. The label kinds parameter tells us what kind of label we are asked to provide. We check if we should return a label for the x-axis, and if yes, we need to get the correct format string. We build a list where we add all standard date-time format strings that correspond to the values of the date-time format enumeration. Let's not forget that the series also supports custom formatting. If custom formatting is required, we use the specified format. If not, we take the formatting string from our sorted list. Finally, we return the date-time value at the specified index and format it with the correct formatting string. If we are not asked about labels at the x-axis, we return an empty string. Our series does not support any other labels. If you want to add tooltips, you can do it in this method, implementing an if case for kind equals label kinds dot tooltip and returning the label you want to see as a tooltip for the value at the specified index. We implement the size property and return for a size the length of the values list. The number of dimensions is 2, for x and y. We implement the supported labels property in a standard way, using the label kinds class variable. Then we have the isEmphasized method, which returns false for our series. The series is sorted only if the dimension is x, meaning values for the y-axis are not sorted. We also add default implementation for the title property. The class exposes a data changed event, and we add the method that raises the event. Next, we implement the properties specific for our series. We have the datetime format property that lets the user format the datetime values with one of the predefined datetime formats. In all custom properties, we raise the data changed event if we detect that the value of the property has changed. We have the label interval property, which tells us how many values we will skip before we get the timestamp of the current value as a label. The smaller the value, the more datetime labels the x-axis we have. Next, we have the custom datetime format, which allows the user to format the series datetime values the way they want. Then we implement the min date and max date properties that specify the two ends of the x axis in terms of datetime values. Finally, we add the min value and max value properties that define the numeric scale for the x axis. We raise the date changed event every time we detect a property value has changed. With that, we are ready to implement our custom series class. It is time that we start using it. 
we define three series variables and create our first myDateTimeSeries instance with the following parameters. We set the current date time as start value for the series and start of the date time interval. The time interval will span one minute. We specify that labels will be drawn per each 10 values and set the numeric interval from 0 to 120. The title of this series will appear in the legend, and we set the supported labels property to label kinds x axis label, which means that this series will provide data for the labels at the x axis. Then we initialize the other two series the same we did the first one. The difference is that the other two series do not provide any labels. We set their supported labels property to none. If we set it to x-axis label, we will get three rows of labels, all showing the same string, which is useless. We add the three series instances to the series collection of the chart. Then, we initialize a timer and a random number. We will need them to generate the data. We handle the click event of the timer, and in the event handler, we generate three random numbers. We add them to the series with our addValue method. Then, we need to check if the end of the axis has been reached. If so, we must readjust the min and max values of the x-axis to bring the newly added values to the visible axis range. We also must refresh the chart control to make the changes appear. We call invalidate layout for that. If we run the chart now, we must be able to see our series. Indeed, they are here, and the axis shows the correct time span. What we have to do now is apply some styling and adjust the settings of the chart to make it look better. We add chart title, hide the labels at the x-axis, and hide the title of the legend. Here is the chart now. There are no numbers at the x-axis. Next, we change the title of the two axes. We have no title on the x-axis, and we add a title in two rows for the y-axis. We change the axis intervals to mimic the numeric intervals of our custom date-time series instances. If we run the chart now, we can see that it is almost ready. We will add some coloring to it now. The charting library has various styles for coloring chart elements. In this sample, we will use the per series style, which colors all elements of a chart series with one brush and stroke. The brushes and strokes are provided as lists, and the control gets the consecutive one for each series. Then we set the background of the plot and the grid. We want a horizontal grid with dashed lines. Now our chart is final.
When the data fills the axes, the chart starts to scroll by changing the min and max value of the axes. No data values get removed. With that, our tutorial is finished. You can download the source code of the sample together with the charting libraries from the link in the video description section. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your interest in MindFusion developer tools.